This is the one way I know of a video on standard deviations and standard errors. Uh, as a disclaimer, uh, this will be an exception to the rule that in this course we'll try to make do with as few symbols as possible. The reason for doing so is the distinction between a standard deviation and standard error is important and can't be covered well without uh, just a bit of math. Let's start with the standard deviation. Standard deviation quantifies the level of variation from individual to individual within a population. For example, if LDL has a normal distribution with a mean of 140 and a standard deviation of 20, then approximately 67% of patients will have LDL values between 120 and 160, that is, within one, within one standard deviation of the mean. Approximately 95% of patients will have values between 100 and 180, and almost all patients will have values between 80 and 200. A similar formula with wider intervals applies to data that don't have a bell shape. One other reminder, the standard deviation is the square root of the variance, and the variance is the square root of the standard deviation. Thus, these quantities are essentially in interchangeable. Some useful mathematical facts. First, the sum of n independent identically distributed observations has a variance of n times v, where v is the variance of any of the indi individual observations. Secondly, the variance of the mean is v over m. But in terms of standard deviations, the standard deviation of the mean is s over the square root of m. To comment, first, these mathematical facts are derived from straightforward algebra. Second, the assumption of independence doesn't always apply. For example, if you've collected lab data from two separate machines, one of which runs high and one of which runs low, the data points from the same machine will be correlated and thus not independent. Applying statistical tests that incorrectly assume independence is a very dangerous undertaking. Finally, what sigma over the square root of n, the standard error of the sample mean is estimating, is how variable the means are expected to be from sample to sample. For example, the sample size is 400, uh, the standard error of the mean will be 1, that is to say 20, the standard deviation of the sample, divided by the square root of 400. In this example, 95% of sample means would be expected to vary between 138 and 142. What the standard error of the sample mean quantifies is the precision with which your sample means are estimated. As the sample size increases, this precision increases. If you like to think of things this way, the standard deviation is used to describe the underlying population, whereas the standard error of the sample mean is used to quantify the precision associated with your statistical analysis. Following the same logic, the variance of the difference between the means of two independent samples is given by the formula slot. The square root of this quantity is the estimate of noise used in the t-test. To summarize, for the t-test, the signal is the difference between the observed means. Under the null hypothesis that there's no difference between the means, the mean of the sampling zero, distribution is zero, and the variance is as given on the slide. Under the alternative hypothesis, there is a difference between the means, labeled delta in this slide, but the variance remains the same. The sampling distribution in question is bell-shaped. We'll have everything we need in order to proceed be normal with mean and variance as provided in the previous slide. For small to moderate size samples, the sampling distribution will be normal if the underlying distribution is approximately normal. For large samples, the sampling distribution will be normal in any case because of the central limit theorem. When the standard deviation is unknown and thus estimated from the data, the normal distribution is replaced with a t distribution. And for large sample size, the t distribution is very, very close to the normal distribution. We use the information in the last two slides in the video on hypothesis testing and power.